Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. This is the second video of pens I got in the mail in the month of May of the year 2019. So many of you might recognize this box. There's a little giveaway there, that logo. Those concentric circles with a pen through the middle of them. If you look at this side, uh, you see some identification. It's a 626. So let's open it up. Extract the pen. You know, this is minimalistic packaging, which I think is fine. And the pen certainly looks very nice. I've really been getting into a more subtle design. I have a number of over-the-top designs, but something that just pleases the eye in many ways, but in a subtle way. This is a great, consistent brown. You know, the logos on the clip, very nicely done. We have a white dot, not necessarily a wingsung tradition, but one which follows through with the tradition this pen emulates. And again, uh, that acrylic really comes out nice. We got some good lights coming in here. So that's how it goes. So the cap comes off with ah, two turns. More than we found with the other wing sunk. So that's one of the differences we'll find. It looks like this exactly the same nib section same material as the pen which I enjoy from an aesthetic viewpoint the length fits fine in the hand it's a light pen and because balances are balances it posts fine and you don't really notice that weight change so it, it falls pretty well in the crooks of the hand the sections a little on the small side and it is quite concave so you are Kind of constrained a little bit to that one area, which is thinner than I usually like, but this pen is okay. I've written with some of my other 626s, uh, I've written long multi-page letters, and have not had any issues with the way that it writes, or the way that it feels, or how comfortable it is. So this uh, unscrews, threads are nice and tight, and we'll see that standard a metal insert and it's identified as 626 and made in China. So one of the things in comparing this to my other 626s is they had a, an o-ring here which this one seems to have that indent for the o-ring but no o-ring so I'm gonna I found that a <clears throat> um, that clear o-ring from the my set of pen BBS o-rings fits nicely on there and what it does is it really gives you a nice when you turn this all the way down, when you get to that O-ring, it just gives you that nice quarter turn to really seat it, even though it works well without it. So we're going to explore this pen a little bit, do some comparisons, and uh, see how this nib writes. I expect it to write just like my other ones, but let's see. I have a nice ink picked out, but I think this acrylic is just very, very nice. And for that, I enjoy the pen for that aesthetic value. Also inside the box are your classic wing song instruction manual. And it shows you Toshi it's a fountain pen, which is nice in case you didn't know. Show you the bits and pieces, the barrel, the converter section and nib. And if you flip it over, it shows you visually, you know, putting it in the ink bottle, turning it counterclockwise to Pull up the piston and, and, and put ink in it. You know, and uh, here's the thing on cleaning, which I think is very nice that they do talk about cleaning. It shows you taking off the converter, putting it in water, flushing water through it. And here is a series of little uh, warnings, which I translated in, in an earlier wing song. And this is as basically uh, not to be used by children under the age of three. Here we have the 626 uh, partially disassembled. Yeah, you know, this is what I would call the 
platinum converter. Yeah, I've seen a number of uh, Chinese manufacturers use a similar design. You know, a nice soft, maybe silicone ring there that's going to seal well. That metal band that's going to hopefully keep it dimensionally stable. And then this very well designed section with a nice two-tone nib on it. Uh, doesn't unscrew. It, it doesn't appear to be a nib assembly of any kind. You know, it just says made in China here. Um, there's probably a brass insert that, that goes pretty far in here to that section. So, uh, you know, it's a well-made pen. I think it's representative of, of the price of the pen. We're going to write with it and see if this nib, uh, the nibs of my other 626s I enjoyed. They're a little bit soft, a little bit wet. So we'll see if this one is the same. It's a nice cap liner inside the cap. Nice and clean design. Seal up well. And this is a little bit translucent material here. Uh, kind of more representative tortoise shell when you look at it this way. So I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the fact that that nib assembly is black on the new version and it was white on the original version. Um, I thank Aaron for pointing that out to me. And when I closely examine the inside of these sections, I think this is screwed in and glued in. That's just my feeling on it because it looks like that should unscrew, but it doesn't. But it's easy to pull out the nib and feed, so it makes it easy to clean. And maybe if you can find a nib that'll fit, put a new nib in. You may ask why would someone use a white insert? Well, here's another pen with a white insert in it. Of course, this is 3776 Platinum Century. So if Platinum did it, I guess it's okay if Wing Sung does it. Here we have four pens that look very, very similar. Three are Wing Sungs, and one is the original, if one may say that, of the Schaefer Balance Series 2. So this is the one we're uh, focusing on in this video, the one I recently received. These two I got a while ago, and there's one with the gold dot and one with the white dot. I prefer the white dot to the gold dot, at least aesthetically. And this is the Schaefer one here. And there is a, a very great deal of similarity. These uh, cap rings here are flat where these are rounded. This says Wing Sung on the clip. This says Schaefer. The resins are very, very close. Um, Schaefer did come in a lot of colors. And Aaron's video has done also a lot of focus on these. Let's uh, just uh, compare the blue one to the brown one to see some of the differences. The, removing the cap shows to me the most significant differences with regard to the section and the nib. Neither of these are great posting pens. Uh, the original Schaefer Balance uh, from the 20s and 30s I felt posted much better. These will post but they come off uh, fairly easily and the Wing Sung is actually a little bit longer posted than the Schaefer. Here we are looking uh, more closely at the sections and the nibs. There was a, a gold band here at the end of the section which has come off and this pen has not seen a lot of use so I think that was a flaw in the original design and manufacturing. I've heard from other people that that ring is, uh, has a tendency to come off. I just think this section here made of the same material as the barrel just, just adds a, a nice touch to the pen from a design viewpoint. This is an 18 karat gold nib. It's a feather touch nib. It's, it's the classic Schaefer design from the balances of, of the uh, 30s. You know, they tried to mimic the two-tone design. Um, but, you know, this is a steel nib, and I don't think it's up to the quality level that the Schaefer's had. Uh, but, you know, for the price differential, a factor of 10 plus, I think uh, Wing Sung did a good job in trying to replicate the feel and the look of a vintage 
balance pen. Here's a little bit more of a close-up of the nibs. I just think it's interesting to compare them. Um, it's hard to get the right type of lighting because these are fairly reflective surfaces, but I think this uh, does a good job at showing off those two nibs. You may ask, Chris, let's learn more about the Schaefer Balance too. So, yeah, some of you who follow my channel know I like collecting books and going to, when you go to pen shows, sometimes you get books like this for like 20 bucks, which is great. Thanks to Pendemonium. So the tail end of the book covers kind of modern Schaefer's. So 90, the 90s were an interesting period. They were bought by Bick. The original uh, editions were limited. This is the Aspen model, comes in a nice wooden box. And then the following year, the regular ones came out. And you'll notice there's only a single band here at the bottom of the cap. Here's the next generation version. You see the two cap bands. And it illustrates the rod that it was machined out of. So it was a solid uh, PMMA rod, I think, was the resin they used. So here's another promo uh, pushing the model. This one is interesting because there's no white dot here. As, as the ones that I have are. This might be a pre-production one. It's an interesting resin. So I was looking for a picture of the Schaefer Balance 2 with all the colors in it. And there's a few on the net, but they're just not very good. So I looked at this resource and found what I was looking for. So here's a series of the Balance 2s with the Jade Green Crimson Glow Amber close to the brown that we have in the 626. Cobalt Glow, which is the one that I have. Aspen, which is uh, one of the limited edition ones. And I think they also brought it out in the secondary series because it has two bands on it. And then Millennium one in 2000, which has a single band, which I think says it's a limited edition. So when I bought mine, it came in a box like this. You know, I think Schaefer used a lot of these metal boxes uh, towards the latter part of uh, <coughs> the 2000s, early part of the 2000s. Yeah, it's nicely done, the lore in here. But you'll uh, notice that this is an interesting looking one. So this is actually a rollerball. And of course, I bought it on sale. So there's the types of things that you could do when these were sold in department stores. And there were a lot of pen stores at one time in New York City. And they moved inventory quite a bit. So that's the rollerball version. And to replace that cracked barrel, I could obviously use this. Just pull out these guts and put in the guts from the fountain pen. So good $20 I spent on this. I don't think I'll ever use the rollerball version, but now I have parts to fix up the fountain pen. You may ask, uh, what is the nib size in the 626? And I'll say five and a half. And so here we have a <clears throat> number six nib. This is the Fuluin one. Here's this 626 easily pulled out with the feed. So it's a slip fit. Here's the nib out of the Schaefer. As you can see, it's even smaller. And here are two number fives. Here's a generic one and here's a wingsung one. So you can see it's definitely bigger than number fives and definitely smaller than number sixes. Um, makes it for not, not an easy nib to replace if that's what you want to do. So I wouldn't buy the pen with the intention of swapping the nib out. You may also ask, what do the feeds look like? Well, this one here at the top is the one out of the Schaefer, which is interesting. I haven't actually seen a feed exactly like that. There's no, you know, channel going down the middle like you normally see. So maybe the ink all comes through this tube there. Um, again, feeds become complex, and this also appears to be just a regular standard injection molded plastic. Here's the feed out of the wing sung, which is more traditional. You know, you have that channel down there that one would think brings the ink to the nib. 
and then you have that cut out in the back standard fins so as usual feeds are all different and the main thing is do they bring a consistent flow of ink to the nib and onto the paper I just thought we'd take a look at these two up close the red one with the gold dot and the brown one with the white dot just so you can see the difference between those two as I mentioned you know taking off the cap is different experience between the two pens this one is smooth and it requires a little bit over one turn this one is also smooth but requires one two over two and a half turns to get it off so they made a definite change to the threads I have a green one and those threads are um, a little bit coarse they cross thread and, and the cap comes off in less than one turn so this is an ink I'm going to put in the pen I haven't used this in uh, a pen for a while since I'm in a brown mood let's give this a shot and see what we think of it let's just take a quick look at the chromatography for this ink it's certainly an interesting chromatography there's a lot of color variations in there all on the very dark side and a little of a residual here at the bottom so that's not what I expected but these colors don't really come through when you write I got a decent fill but I hate this insert I mean the sailor bottles are just short they don't have a lot of depth to it and this pulls up ink from here you know near the end of that section so if you stick this in here with a nib at the bottom as you can see through this slit you're not you're not going to get ink so I can't fill this pen from a, a sailor ink bottle with this insert in it. and of course pulling it out is messy and you get ink all over and blah 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 so enough said let's put nib to paper we reached that all important time of nib on paper yes it takes more than a few turns to get the cap off it does post nice but not as secure as you might expect but it'll stay on under normal use and the balance is good pun intended so let's see how this nib works with the sailor ink This ink is fairly dry, but it, it works well in this nib. I mean, that's a nice dark line, and this is a dark brown with, I would say, shades of black and gray in it. It's called a summer brown, but eh, not a summer brown that I would consider to be uh, typical. So this nib writes as I expected. I mean, it's just smooth, consistent. You know, this would make a great everyday carry pen because of that. You know, a pen that you just uncap and write with. The nib has a little bit of a bounce to it, but it's not flex. So with very little pressure, you can lay down a fairly fine line, horizontal and vertical. But if you put a little bit of pressure on the vertical, you can see that it opens up a little bit. And as I mentioned, it's a wet one. So uh, when I first did these, I didn't rate pens, so we're going to rate this one. And I'm going to give it a 9.2 and one check. So I think from an aesthetics viewpoint, the pen is excellent. It's an iconic design. Um, I think they could have modernized the section a little bit. You know, the original Schaefer, this was black, so at least they've made it out of the same material. 
They have that metal insert here, which the Schaefer didn't have. And as I look more closely at my Schaefer balance, there's a crack developing from the threads up through the barrel. So that's not a good sign. And the pen has not been abused at all. It's basically spent most of its life indoors and in an enclosed environment. So that's something that I'm a little bit disappointed about, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. So I hope you've enjoyed this view of a, of a remake of a pen with uh, very little changes to it. You know, new material, new colors are basically the basic changes. But, you know, if this kind of design and shape appeals to you and you like a nice, fine, consistent, wet writing nib, then this should be on a short list for you. You know, the price is, is in the 20s. Um, and they are fairly available, so that makes it nice. So may you have many great, excellent writing experiences. Enjoy putting ink on paper. You know, seeing thoughts being written down certainly uh, does a lot from my perspective in, you know, cementing those thoughts and, and bringing them into, into mind. And also allows you to share them. So we've reached the end of this video. Enjoy your writing. Enjoy your day. Enjoy everything. Until the next video, bye for now. It is a nice writer, Dark Ink.